Welcome back to part three of our guide for resin 3D printing your own soft plastic lure molds. So in part one, we went over the basics of resin printing and why you would want to do it for making lures. And in part two, I showed you how to take a file from the computer and get it ready to make into an actual three-dimensional object using this machine. And in part three, it's time to actually make one. So in part two, I made a file with you guys and I said where we were going to use it for this video. That uh, that didn't work out too good. So you can absolutely print all three of these molds at the same time. But the more molds or the more material this machine's going to use per print, the more often you have to top up this vat. And it wound up being something crazy. It was like I had to babysit it every three hours for 18 hours and it just wasn't working out. So it's still going to be the same thing. I'm just breaking it up into separate prints. Right now we have our machine ready to go. I already pre-warmed it and I made sure my bed's level. We also have our spare bottle of resin in the back heating up too. And we're just going to select our file. We're doing the three inch grub right now and we're going to press print. So this machine's going to start going now. We are going to have to top this off and fill up this resin vat a little bit more in the middle of the print. I'm going to jump back in when that happens and show you guys how that works. All right, so our printer's been going for about four or five-ish hours now. As you guys can see, the resin volume here is starting to get a bit low, so we're going to top it off. I already opened up my enclosure and took the yellow cover off. So if you look down here, we see this pause button. All we got to do is press that. It's going to finish the layer it's printing, and then it's going to pull that build plate up and stop the print. All right, so once it's done with the pause function, that build plate's going to lift all the way up so we actually have some room to dump the new resin in. So I'm going to cut and fill this up because I don't think I can do it one-handed. But this is filled up quite a bit more now. We're just going to press play here. This build plate's going to lower back, and it's going to go over zoom printing as normal. All right, so everything's all printed out. I printed out the other molds too, just off camera. So we have all three sizes of that grub mold to go over. For this part of the video, we're going to go over post-processing that mold so it's ready to inject. There's not too much you have to do, it's pretty simple. Um, but before we get into that, I just want to go over some supplies and then some safety things that probably should have been in part one, but better late than never. So the most important thing about internet safety is don't trust random strangers on the internet about safety. Definitely do your own research. But this resin when it's in its uncured state or partially cured state it's really not good to get on your skin um, people have like allergic reactions to it and it's one of those things i forget the fancy schmancy science term where the more you're exposed to it the higher chance you have of having a reaction the worse the reaction gets and also this stuff if you do spill on your skin it does absorb in your skin and if you spilled like the whole bottle on it or something, when it does cure in UV light, it gives off quite a bit of heat. So if you took a shower in the bottle and then ran outside, it wouldn't feel too good either. So definitely do your own research on that. I've gotten it on my skin before. Clearly I'm not dead yet, but you want to avoid that at all costs. So the most important piece of equipment here is just a pair of gloves. They make nicer, thicker ones, or you can just use disposable ones. Anything you get this resin on, you really shouldn't throw in the garbage right away. The resin's also toxic to wildlife and marine life in its liquid form. But once you cure that all the way through, it becomes in there and it's safe to handle with your bare hands. So that's why we have to do our post-processing. When that print comes out, it's not cured completely all the way through. And there's also going to be a liquid layer of resin on the outside just from dipping in and out of the vat, the finished part. So we're going to go over the tools to clean that extra resin off the outside as well as finish the curing process. So a couple things you need. The gloves I just mentioned. I'm trying these new uh, better, more durable gloves to begin with. Just to touch on the safety a little bit more. When you're wearing the gloves, don't touch anything besides the piece you're working on. And just be mindful you're not like scratching your ear, picking your nose or anything like that. Next we have the other tool or one of the tools you're going to need is a scraper. So this is going to be very useful for getting that final print off the build plate. You want a nice sharp metal scraper. To clean the actual print, we're going to use a toothbrush. This works the best, especially for getting into all the little nooks and crannies. Combined with that, you're definitely going to want to have some paper towels on hand. Bring more than you think you need. This isn't a necessity, but like I said, you don't want to spill this resin anywhere. So I like to use a tub. 
this is just a small storage container I use. Um, you can really use anything that's solid and holds. It's just so if you slop anything, it goes in there, not in your workbench or whatever you're working on. I might do it without this just because it's going to get in the way of the camera. And the other thing is you're going to need some kind of solvent to clean the resin off. And it's got to be in a container deep enough to dip it in. So I like to use, this is just a cheap container I got from Walmart. And most people will use uh, isopropyl alcohol, which is just your regular rubbing alcohol, which works fine. But it's much more expensive than what I use. I just use denatured alcohol. It works the same at the end of the day, and it's much, much cheaper. All right, so the first step is getting this thing off the dull plate. So I have that right here. I just took that dull plate directly off the printer. And as I mentioned in part two, we want to print this with the chamfer on the outside. That's so you can take the scraper and just kind of work your way in there. This stuff is a bit brittle, so you don't want to start ramming the scraper in there because it will crack if you're not careful. And then you would have to start fresh with the whole print. So that piece is off. You want pretty clean. I am going to put this in my little tub and we're going to do the same thing with the other half, which the chamfer should be on this side. If you're having issues getting this off, you can also turn your uh, burn in layer settings a little bit or tune those rather. And if you do this when it's colder out, it's usually quite a bit easier and do it when it's warm out. So a lot of times you'll see resin printers are advertised at the wash and cure station. So the wash station puts it in some alcohol, spins it around, washes it real nice, and the cure station is a light that cures the resin. You actually don't need either, and I'm not going to recommend this just because this resin cannot stay submerged in alcohol. It actually breaks down the outside layers and the longer it stays in that resin, the worse it's gonna get. I haven't had it ruin a mold yet, but you get some, uh, you get these like little white little lines that come off. It almost looks like lint from a paper towel roll. And it's actually the outside of the mold breaking down. So you really wanna keep this stuff out of the alcohol as much as possible. So we're just gonna dip it, kind of do a little swish back and forth, pull it out. And we just wanna start scrubbing with the toothbrush. This is the best way I've found to do this. Uh, it's gonna look kind of silly on camera. It's a little hard for me to do, but this is gonna start breaking down that outside layer of resin that's stuck. And if you don't get that completely off, it's you're gonna have problems getting that final cure. You also wanna be careful with the vented side of the mold. You wanna make sure you get all that um, uh, uncured resin out of that mold vent, otherwise it won't work right. I don't know if you guys can see this, but that glare is what I'm talking about for that outside of the mold breaking down. You can kind of see all the stuff coming off. So I'm just going to keep hitting this with the toothbrush. A good tip to find out when you're done, or a good tip to know when you're done, is when you first touch these, they're going to feel kind of slimy. And when you're done curing or cleaning all this off, it should feel rather smooth. It won't be slimy anymore. And you can also wipe it down with like a terry cloth, paper towel, anything like that will work. It really helps get that off. So I'm going to do these with the, uh, I'm going to do the other five or whatever I got to do with the camera off. And I'll see you when I'm done cleaning all of those. All right. So at this point now, we're all done cleaning all our molds up. I also gave them some time to dry off, which is an important step. It's not super important, but it does help um, uh, make these a little bit clearer. As you guys can see, this is nowhere near as clear as it was when it came off the printer. So now we have to do our post gear. It should be a little tacky right now. So there's a couple different ways to do this. They do make the wash and cure machines, as I mentioned before, you can stick this in the cure per, cure the death cure portion of that, and it'll cure just fine. Some people build their own UV curing boxes, 
I use UV resin for the clear coat on all my hard baits. So I already have one set up and that's all I'm gonna use. But you also really don't need to buy anything. You can literally just stick them outside in the sun. It's gonna take a little bit longer. It could take all day. It depends quite a bit on where you are and how much UV light it's getting and stuff like that. So you really don't have to spend any money on that portion though. You could just toss these outside until they're ready to go. So whatever method you're using to post cure this, it's gonna be different for everybody just depending on the light source strength. The basic gauge for you guys should be, it should stop feeling tacky and that's when you know it's done. If you're having problems getting rid of the tackiness, you can submerge these in a clear container of water and cure it that way. And then it will cure faster and should eliminate that tackiness. So I'm gonna set up my box now and I will see you guys when that part's going. All right, so these are all done curing. I did have to dip them in water or cure them under water to make you cure, right? The outside was still a little tacky. If you're having issues curing, you think it's taking too long, just stick in some water and it should cure up without any issues. So this is almost done. We have one final mandatory step for this mold, and we just got to do a little tiny bit of sanding. So this resin expands as it cures. So the first couple layers are going to be wider than the rest of the mold, and it creates what's called an elephant's foot. I think you can kind of see it on the camera. But anyway, all we got to do is sand this down really quick. Otherwise, the mold won't close right. You don't have to go crazy. Um, and the, the sandpaper it really doesn't matter. I'm going to use 120 grit, but you can use 90, 60, 80, whatever. So all you you literally just got to take that edge and then sand it down. That's it for that. You really just need like five seconds of sanding. You just want to make sure this edge is flat. Otherwise, when you try to stick these two halves together, it won't seal right. And these are ready to go. So I'm going to sand the rest of these down. I was going to end this video here but I thought that was kind of lame. So I'm gonna sand the rest of these down and we're going to inject these for the video. Um, one other thing I forgot to mention before, if you do dip these in water, make sure they are bone dry before you start shooting them because if that molten plastic hits that water, it's gonna be a very bad time. I'm gonna have these all hooked up and we're gonna shoot a batch of each of these grubs. Once everything's dried off, I'll have that set up. I just wanted to go over one design change with you which is normally I had a million different holes in all these to take quarter inch bolts and you'd have to bolt them together. It was really annoying. It was a giant pain in the butt. So now it's the same size hole designed to take a quarter inch dowel this time. So it won't go all the way through. This is just to be used as an alignment pin. So that way they line up nice and good. And you can stack a bunch of them up together like so in a vise, clamp them together, and you can shoot a few different molds at the same time. I'm gonna give these a bit longer to dry off and we'll get into that part. All right, we're gonna try all three of these out at the same time with some nice uh, fluorescent orange. I'm hoping this works out good. The, uh, like I said before, those pins are supposed to be quarter inch. And I wasn't paying attention at the hardware store and got five sixteenth inch dowels, so that's not gonna work. I tried to line them up as best as I can. I also really like to use C clamps instead of bar clamps, but the ones I have aren't wide enough, so hopefully these don't flash out. Just gonna keep topping off these sprues. That's plugged up. All right, hopefully that worked out good. It's kind of hard to see with the vise, but you can see those tails filled up nicely. And orange isn't really the best color to show this off, but. I will see you guys when these are ready to demold. All right, this stuff should be all cooled off now. We'll demold it and see how we made out. Okay. 
that's our three inch. So you got like a leaf in the mold. Whoopsie. This is our four inch grub. And our five inch. And with that, we draw this chapter in our tutorial series to an end. So hopefully at this point, you guys now know how to resin 3D print your own molds and get a finished bait. I redesigned quite a lot of my molds while I was making this video series. I wound up redoing the five inch paddle tail, the grub, the 4.3 inch aerotail drop shot worm got a revision. I redid the fathead minnow paddle tail. I'm working on redoing the tube molds. There's going to be a three and a four inch version now. And I'm working on the rest of them as we speak. Basically just revising them so they're easier to resin print with. And the, uh, the venting is a lot better. And like I said, this is drawing to a close now. I hope you guys enjoyed. We are going to move on to some other stuff in future videos. I'm going to go back into doing some more bait making. I have some pretty cool ideas for making jigs, some new soft plastics, and I also have some hard baits in the works. And when we broach back into tutorials again, we're going to focus on actually designing our own lures. I'm going to teach you guys how to design a lure start to finish. With that being said, all my molds are going to be linked down in the description below. Hopefully you guys can make some baits yourselves and catch some fish on them. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.